the war on guns. Arming yourself against gun control lies. Are you ready for that? Dr. John Lund. How are you, sir? Doing great. Thanks Thank for you. Talking Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live today. If you have some questions for John, you can ask them away. I'll have someone uh, tell me the questions, and we'll get John to answer them for you. But first, I want to talk about, you and I talked a little bit, and I heard you on the radio show with Glenn uh, earlier this morning. And uh, your, uh, you talked to uh, Stu on the TV show. And I jokingly, uh, this morning, talked about the information in your book as mind-numbing. And it's not mind-numbing at all. It's unbelievable information that I have just found fascinating. So Thanks. I'd like to just kind of run down the list a little bit of some, some things that people may not be aware of that the war on guns will give them that information. You won't tell them everything. I mean, you've got to give them a reason to buy the book. Right. Right? So let's talk a little bit about the mass shootings. Um, you know, we hear so much about the mass shootings and uh, how we need common sense gun legislation to stop these mass shootings. There's no other country in the world like the United States of America with these mass shootings. Right. Well, there's like True. a couple errors in <laughs> what you just said. I mean, the first part is, uh, you know, common sense gun laws. The president, after each of these mass public shootings, has come out. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. the one thing he consistently says each time is background checks on private transfers. I wish a reporter sometime would just ask the president, can you name one of these mass public shootings that you talked about? where this law would have made a difference. A follow-up question to the president? No, just one time. You know, either during his administration or even years before, because they simply wouldn't have stopped any of these attacks. And, um, you know, it's like he has this one law that he wants to have, and so he shoehorns it into anything that deals with guns in order to try to push it, right? You know, the evidence is actually it's counterproductive in terms of who it would help. But, you know, the other part of the question that you have is, how unique is the United States? The president, in that case, he wants he wants us to have gun control laws like they have in Europe. So he's built up the false premise of that already. Right. And so, but in fact, if you compare the United States to the European Union during his administration, the European Union has had about 50 percent more casualties from of mass public shooting than we've had in the United States. We don't hear about these of things. Of course often, we have. No, but, we don't. We don't but, hear about War on guns. I go through and I list out each of the mass public shootings that have occurred in, in Europe because, you know, so people can check for themselves because they've back on their fur. I'll give you a simple example. If you would ask people, name where, where the four worst K through 12 mass public shootings have occurred, my guess is almost no one would realize that three of the four have occurred in Europe. No way. Two of them have occurred I don't know, in Germany. I don't know that I, I mean, I don't even know about that. I mean, yeah. there's no way that. Would answer that. Except, okay. But I mean, but you know, it's it puts a hole in their you know bubble where they try to go sure and does. say we we should adopt Europe's gun control laws to stop mass public shootings, even though they have a worse mass public shooting record than we do. That is unbelievable. Now you said something uh, when we were talking yesterday about um, the shootings in the United States. And I, wanted, I don't know that I have these numbers right, but if I remember right, you said 75% of the shootings happen in 3% of the counties in the United States. Is that right? right? So, well, that is unbelievable. 75% of the murders in the United States take place in 3% of the counties. And so that's a little bit different than shootings. Right, sure. I gotcha. okay. But, um, right, I mean, we have a bad drug game problem. In the United States, if you go and look, even in those three percent of the counties, the murders aren't evenly spread out. Even there, they're heavily concentrated in a few areas. And you know, when people go and talk about different types of gun laws, you know, they have to understand it's the same organizations that are involved with illegal drugs that are going to, that are involved in these types of shootings. And so, just as it's been hard to stop these gangs from getting illegal drugs. We have to realize it's going to be hard to keep them from getting the weapons that they use to go and protect these. In the three uh, percent counties, in those small areas of counties, what are the gun laws like? Do you They're know? relatively restricted. I mean, they've got to be pretty. I'm just thinking of what those where those areas would be 
seems to be those are probably the most restricted areas. Yeah, they do tend to be the most restricted. Yeah, unbelievable. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the gun laws that need to happen, the restrictive laws. Um, with um, a couple of our candidates running for president of the United States, so one being uh, Hillary Clinton. Right. Um, Hillary is not really a friend to guns. I mean, she once would get rid of concealed carry if she had an option. If 14.5 million Americans have concealed carry permits, she's spoken out against it recently. But the big impact that she's going to have is going to be in terms of the quarter, or the most obvious immediate right. impact. You know, um, she has promised to overturn uh, the Supreme Court decisions in Heller and McDonald. The Heller decision dealt with Washington, D.C. It struck down Washington, D.C.'s ban on guns. They banned handguns, but then they also had a felony punished by five years in prison if you put, you could own a long gun, but if you put a bullet in the long gun, in a rifle, you go to jail for five years. You didn't have to fire it, just put wow. a bullet in the gun. And so the Supreme Court said, look, this effectively makes it a crime for you to use <laughs> yeah. any gun in self-defense. In any yeah, your kid's got the cane. Right, exactly. And so they said that goes too far. So Hillary says she wants to overturn these in order to allow reasonable regulations. Well, the only regulation those cases dealt with was a complete ban on guns. And so somebody should ask, well, why is a complete ban on guns a reasonable regulation? Yeah, no kidding. But, uh, you know, if she, whoever wins the election is going to determine the outcome of that because the Antonin Scalia, who wrote the Heller decision, died earlier this year. It was a five to four vote. So right now, you have a four four tie in the Supreme Court, and whoever replaces him is going to make a big difference. You know, the, the one gun control law that I really wish people would address, and Trump has, has done this, is this issue of gun free zones. You know, 98%, over 98% of the mass public shootings in the United States since 1950 have occurred in places where general citizens aren't allowed to protect themselves. And, and the war on guns, I try to go through, and it's amazing how many times these killers explicitly explain why they picked the targets that they did. And at the top of their list, time after time, is to, zone. Right, to go to a place That's where they don't have to worry about the victims being able to defend themselves. These guys may be crazy, but they're not stupid. They know, they know the longer they can kill people before somebody has a gun to come in and stop them, more people they're going to be able to kill. Right. We're talking to uh, John Mott, Dr. John Mott, uh, about his book, The War on Guns, uh, Arming Yourself Against Media Lies. Um, media Lies, coverage. For example, yesterday, you talk about uh, uh, media bias. Yesterday at the University of Texas, we had uh, students running around with sex toys. Right. Uh, because they were saying that these are illegal, but that guns are not. They're worried about the open carry on the university campuses now. Okay, well, how do we get past them being scared of actually seeing a gun on campus? Because they're actually safer right. with the guns on campus than no, they I, are with their sex toys. Look, I couldn't agree with you more. Look, I understand the desire to, you think, make places safer by banning guns. But the problem is it actually serves as a magnet for these attacks. When you put a sign in front of your home that says your home is a gun-free zone, <laughs> I, when I debate gun <laughs> control not. advocates, none of them will do that. No way. Here's the thing, though. How do you overcome it? The reason why people are afraid is that, you mentioned the media bias, you constantly hear about bad things about guns in the All media. The time. You never hear about the benefits of the national. You know, the Blaze is different. Fox is somewhat different. But the rest of the media, people watch it, ask them to name one time when they've heard somebody use a gun to defend themselves or others. And, and the just, outcome was a benefit and not an illegal shooting. Right, exactly. And, and that affects people's perception. So my, what I would say is, a year from now in, in Texas, people are going to wonder what all the fuss was about, about this law. You know, there are 10 other states that mandate that public universities have to allow permanent concealed handguns on campus. There haven't been problems in any of those places. And the same thing is going to happen here. And so a lot of the discussion, you know, I hope these types of hysterical things rebound to raise questions about the credibility 
of those who are making, you know, making these types of claims. I hope so. I mean, let's not, you know, I think another thing that kind of bugs me is that uh, the concealed carry. Right? So some states you can, some states you can. Uh, traveling across the country, I have to be concerned about uh, where I can and where I can't. Um, we coming with making some laws uh, so that people can travel across the country. Uh, even open carry. I mean, you should be able to just have a gun in your back. I mean, years ago, people were driving around with the guns in the back window, and you'd be fine. Right. Uh, no problem. And so the, with all the bias that's changed on the hatred of guns, you can't even you see a, a weapon and people start freaking out. What, what's being done to make it available for people to travel across the United States with one license? Right. Well, um, you can get licenses from some individual states that will be recognized in multiple states. But it's not the same as a driver's license. I mean, if you have a driver's license in any state, you can go and drive sure. a car any place. Um, you know, there's some states like California or New York uh, or New Jersey where if you have a permit, they don't recognize permits from any other state, and it's incredibly difficult to get a permit in those states. You have truck drivers, you have people who go on to do business, Hello. you know, that may be up late at night, may be in dangerous areas. I agree with you. They should be able to go and protect themselves. Permit holders are incredibly law-abiding. And I can't find any other group in the population that is as law-abiding as permit holders are. They lose their permits for any reason, any firearms-related violation, at thousands of one percentage point. Um, and, uh, but, you know, it's going to require federal law. President Obama would veto it right now. Oh, my gosh, yes. uh, Hillary Clinton wouldn't allow it. And you have a problem even getting through the Senate because they can't quite get to that 60-vote threshold because the Democrats pretty much will vote consistently against uh, you well, know. They believe it would be safer, like uh, Australia, for example. Uh, you know, let's just ban all the guns and everything is, everybody is safer. Right. Right? I have a chapter on Australia in the book. They haven't banned guns. I mean, Hillary Clinton's also pointed to the UK as an example we should follow. And there they have banned handguns <laughs> and rifles. Uh, Australia's a little bit more complicated in the sense that they had a big gun buyback in uh, 96 and 97, which reduced the percentage of gun, legally owned guns by about a third. But after that, people, once they got the proper licenses and stuff, were able to go and buy guns again. Okay. And the gun ownership rate gradually, by 2010, went back up to what it had been before the buyback. Okay. And, uh, but that doesn't fit the crime patterns no, that the gun control advocates would say, because they would have predicted a big sudden drop and then an increase in murders, and, right. and that's that's not what happened. It was falling before, continued to fall after, but actually at a slower rate of drop than it had been before the buyback. Amazing. John, the information in here is uh, unbelievable, Thanks. and I really, I really enjoy talking to you, and I can't wait to finish reading it, especially uh, I know that uh, you have fun with uh, uh, Bloomberg's money. Uh, being spread around the country. That's one thing um, I wish people understood, to the huge amount of money that Bloomberg is spending. I mean, it's, traditionally, the gun control debate has been a legislative debate. But Bloomberg is a smart guy. He realizes that if he's going to win, he has to change people's perceptions about guns. He's doing it. And he's spending hundreds of millions of dollars on research. He's spending money for Columbia University to train journalists to how to, quote, properly cover the gun issue. <laughs> That is, we would be in, uh, you'd never hear the end of uh, the NRA right. spending money to teach people how to cover gun cases. Right. It'd be unbelievable. The War on Guns, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Live. John, thank you. Oh, no, thank much. you, I appreciate it.